Hello YouTube, Billy is back again with another build. Um, this is going to be a double weapon wielding slayer build. Um, we're going to go with a human here because uh, double weapons are exotic. So we need uh, we need the feats, all the feats that we can get. All the feats that we can get. Why can we not continue? All right. Let's give her the hair to match the portrait. All right. Um, first things first, monk dip time. Yes sad but true monks just get the highest ac in the game um if you've ever watched me stream before you'll know that i play on no reload and on hard difficulty which means that i want to get as much ac ramping as possible in the early game when it's the most important so i'm going for high decks as well just for the extra ac once again so the problem with this build is that there's no way for us to get a uh, shield on us until we get jubilost so we're going to have to play fairly carefully up until that point. So basically that's until the beginning of Act 2. Uh, we want Knowledge Arcana because we're going to qualify for DD. Uh, because another spell that we really want as a melee frontliner or any kind of melee character really is Mirror Images. It's just too good to pass up. So we're picking Dodge for the AC once again. Exotic Weapon Proficiency. We're going for Orc Double Axe. You could go for Two Bladed Sword. Uh, it's up to you really, whichever you prefer the looks of. There's some nice orc double axes in the game. There's a really nice uh, two-bladed sword, but the two-bladed sword comes relatively late, and the orc double axes come a little earlier. I think the first orc double axe you can pick up at the start of Act Four, which is a named one, and then you get a really nice one at the start of Act Five as well. Maybe even at the end of Act Four, actually. I'm not sure when that area becomes available. So right, um, the next level, another dip, guys. I'm I am sorry, I do humbly and sincerely apologize, but it is what it is. Um, this build needs it. And again, this build is actually not really like, I'm not saying this is going to be the most damaging build in the game or anything like that. It's just a way to make uh, double weapons work. Uh, we're too dumb to cast spells, so it really doesn't matter what you pick here. And we're only going for one level. Now we're going to go on level three, we're going to go into Archaeologist, and this is in order to qualify for our DD levels. But we're going to go into two archaeologist levels we want trickery because it's nice to be able to stack a little bit more xp on your main character by doing trickery checks at level three i think we're going to pick up two weapon fighting uh, we have 16 decks so we can qualify for the first uh feat first two weapon fighting feet anyway uh as spells i usually go cure light wounds quite quite useful to have in the early game just to make you know help you heal up on rest and remove fear is always useful as well uh, for those annoying boggarts who like to use terrifying croak or whatever it's called second level of uh bard right away we're done with mobility you only need three points to get the effect that we're looking for persuade always max that out and the rest goes into trickery now here we're gonna go actually we'll just pick it here we'll, we'll go weapon focus or double axe there it is and the other spells don't matter one io to pick whatever you feel comfortable with now we're going to go into our Slayer level, Deliverer. So basically, uh, you can apply your study target through Sneak Attack, but we get Sneak Attack from Alchemist, so we don't need to go into Slayer 3 for this to work, which is nice. It's a nice little bonus. Pick whatever deity you feel like role-playing, I guess. And then we're done with Knowledge Arcana now at this point. This qualifies us for DD. Here at level 5, we can go into Accomplished Sneak Attacker. Let's see. We could pick up Dazzling Dip display i think well, i was gonna skip accomplished sneak attacker for now because we're quite tight with feet so i think we're gonna go into the the dazzling display and now we're going to the real dd the dragon disciple right no more points necessary for knowledge arcana continue with our persuade pick any draconic bloodline i think acid might be mildly better like tiny bit more damage uh present in the game that's acid at level seven, we're gonna go for outflank, I think, if it becomes available. I feel like that would be the choice here. Yes, it is. There it is, Bard. As far as the DD feat goes, I go for blind fight always, and this kind of, uh, for this kind of build. And here, like, yeah, this is totally up to you, whatever you feel like is convenient. And we're gonna continue with our Dragon Disciple. You want to go four level Dragon Disciple, I realized that I did make a tiny mistake. So because we're not Slayer, we can't qualify for the uh, dual wielding feats and ignore decks just yet, but we want to pick up the dual wielding feats when they come available. So at this point in the game, 
Uh, level 9 actually is when you want to pick up improved 2 weapon fighting. You want to wear a plus 4 dex belt to pick it up. Those will be there. You'll have one. You'll be wearing one because you want the AC from dex. You'll be wearing a belt of physical flow plus 4 or maybe even a belt of perfection. I don't know. You'll have the physical flow belt for sure though at this point in the game. So there's no better belt for you to use. So it's no skin off your back. You know what I mean? Know what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? All right, mirror images. The whole point for the DD dip, other than the nice uh, plus four strength, is to continue Bard's spellcasting progression and get the mirror images. Fourth level of DD, and we're done with DD. Um, here, so we can qualify for it now because I'm wearing the belt, so we're going to pick it up. Just bear in mind that if you unequip the belt, you'll lose access to these feats, right? But you would never unequip the belt, and there's no enemies in the game that'll, like, uh, take equipment off of you, for example. Uh, there are some games with that mechanic, but this is not one of them. Cure moderate wounds, just an extra heal. You know, actually, it's up to you. Probably not very necessary. Now here, after a fourth level DD, we go back into the Slayer levels, and we continue maxing Trickery and Persuade. And now we're going to get to the good stuff. Also, the uh, the Vivid Dip gives us a mutagen for 10 minutes, which is nice for boss fights, you know. Just a little extra strength, a little extra AC. It's just, just nice. It's just nice. Level 11, Shattered Defenses. My humble opinion, very necessary ability. Comes just on time. Level 11 is fine, I think, for Shatter. You maybe want it at level 10, maybe even 9 if you can squeeze it in. But for this build, we need so many other feats that... Level 11 it is, and that's perfectly, perfectly viable, in my humble opinion. Here we go into Strength. Uh, yeah, so one point into Constitution, four points into Strength. The order of which is up to you. I like to put my Con point first. A lot of people will say put it last, you know, up to you. Combat Style Trick, uh, sorry, Combat Trick. And at this point in time, we're done. We want Train Wing. For the plus four AC, it's pretty nice. Or you could say intimidating prowess, actually. Maybe we get we'll take that next level. So here we pick up crane wing. Intimidating prowess is next. I like to pick up one uh, skill point boosting feat, either deceitful or intimidating prowess, or something to boost my persuade skill. As I said, I don't reload, so I want the largest chance I can get to pass my skill checks. Uh, for this build, you could argue Deceitful might be good because it adds to uh, Trickery as well. But we get a nice little bonus from being an archaeologist to that. So I think Intimidating Prowess will add more more points to our Persuade checks. And the, the largest Persuade checks in the game are Intimidate. Uh, so here it is, Intimidating Prowess. Speaking of the devil. Now, back into Slayer. Just going to continue with Slayer for a while here. At least until level 10. Well, level 14, Greater 2 Weapon Fighting becomes available. You can pick it through a combat style feed if you wanted to. But of course, you're going to be wearing a belt. You're going to qualify for it one way or another. So that's fine. Pick that up. Level 15, we're going to go into Double Slice here, I think, because we've got our full attacks around. Is there anything juicier, though? Actually, I think Improved Crit is juicier. That's my humble opinion. Improved Crit is juicier. Orc Double Axe, yes. Improved Crit at level 15. Slayer, 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 all the way to the bank. Now, we want to at least 10 levels in Slayer, and then we'll see how we finish off. I haven't thought about it too much the last couple of levels, but it should be it should speak for itself. Oh yeah, so we we picked up Crane Wing, actually. That's absolutely fine. Actually, we could just pick up Crane Repost here. No, we pick up Double Slice here, obviously. Level 16, Double Slice. Level 9, um... Level 9 Slayer, we're here, and we're going to go for Crane Repulse. I think we'll go for Accomplished Sneak Attack here. Why not? May as well. It's 3.5 average damage. It's more than Hammer the Gap. It's more than, like, the plus one attack bonus is not huge from Crane Repulse. Not huge, not important. We've got everything else that we really, truly want. So yeah, I think this is a perfect time to pick that up. Finally, our 10th level Slayer. Boom, boom. And we get our Divine Anathema, the whole point of going into Slayer. Um, now, here, 
We could go into Alchemist for the extra feats. I think we might just go for three extra Alchemist levels. Could we fit in two levels of Slayer? I think that three extra Alchemist levels will be a bit juicier, plus it'll extend our mutagen, make it less annoying. Plus we get two extra, uh, we get one extra sneak attack dice like this. I think this is the way, boys. So here, uh, I think, yeah, and you can go for, Train Repulse is pretty nice. And then Crippling Strike. This is why we needed level 10 Slayer before we pick our uh, Alchemist level, so that we qualify for uh, Enhanced Talents. So yeah, Crippling Strike. Really nice little ability. Comes a little late to matter much, though, I'll, I'll admit. Doesn't matter much. At this point in the game, you'll be wearing a crown plus six, so you'll be able to cast level one alchemist spells, which is uh, which is neat, I guess. You can cast shield at this point in the game, but you wouldn't be playing without Jubilost anyway, so it's not a biggie. No biggie. And that's the last level, two strike. Right, so my character looks a bit messed up because I did a couple of respects. This happens. What we'll do to fix it is uh, a quick save and reload. And I'll quickly go over some of the equipment that we want to be using. It's pretty straightforward. Surprise, surprise. It's either Atrocities. This is the first one you'll pick up. It's in the Flint Rock Grasslands, I think. Uh, you can pick it up at the start of level four, uh, Act 4. Sorry, not level 4. And then you want to go into Fate Render. Fate Render is actually quite a nice item. Um, it marks the... Every time you hit, you mark the target for an extra damage. And it's 1d10 plus the Wielder Strength modifier. And of course, we're going to be sitting on quite a decent amount of strength due to our DD levels. And the bonus is that it actually looks quite cool compared to other you know weapons with all the shiny stuff going on all the time uh, as far as other items you're going to be wearing a crown or something going to be wearing butterfly wings manticore boots and importantly the protector robe you can get this at the end of level uh why do i say level act four necklace natural armor protection maybe uh, or you'd be using bark skins from juby actually in which case you go for like maybe double crosses for most of the game and then you can go into Jeronas if you really need it. Uh, you go into um, Cloak of the Lion and then there's the opposite of, I think it's called Absolver's Cloak, Ring of Circumstance, Ring of ult Ultimate Protection and then uh, you want Armor Bracers here. You want plus 8 Armor Bracers. As long as you have over plus 4 you can stop casting Mage Armor on yourself. Obviously you want to have a Sorcerer with you or a Wizard who can make sure to keep Mage Armor on your character until you get Armor Blaze Bracers of plus four or higher. Because uh, bracer Armor for Bracers doesn't stack with Mage Armor. It's basically the same modifier. All right, that's the build in short, in a nutshell. Um, damage is respectable. We get seven attacks around plus eight from Haste. Uh, this looks a little bad, but it'll be much better with the Marked and the Sneak Attacks, the whatever it's called here. Just it says Marked Target. So it's another 1d10, plus 2d6 from Divine Anathema, plus 5d6 sneak attack damage. I mean, that's that's a respectable amount of damage. And as I said, the point of this build isn't to have like the most damage. It's just to use, you know, make this a viable weapon class. Um, you're going to have good AC. This is unbuffed. We're missing armor bracers. We're missing a lot of stuff. We're missing ring of circumstance. So we're missing shield spell. Like easily, easily above 60, I would say. Uh, and that's probably even... Not necessary, I think, on hard. I think on hard, the most AC you need is 56, something like that. Oddly specific, Billy. Touch AC is all right. Not the best, though. Not the best, but uh, that is what it is. It's because our dex isn't so high. But um, yeah, that's the build. Hope you guys liked it. Um, see you guys on the next one. Take it easy. Oh, yeah, and if you enjoyed the video, I stream my runs live on Twitch. Link is in the description below. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.